Well, look, this is, this is absolutely groundbreaking research. I mean, you'd have to ask why it hasn't been done before this, either by the companies themselves or, um, or by um, the EISs from these companies. Uh, none, of them, none of those EISs actually canvass this as a possibility. Uh, by coal seam gas centres of excellence of universities, no, none of them are, are doing any of this research. It takes a couple of academics from uh, this university in Lismore to, um, to actually go out there and get the information where it's happening. Uh, of course, um, you know, the whole world has been hearing from the people who live out there that this is what's happening, that they are being surrounded by gas, that um, uh, they're living in a gas field, there's been bubbles coming up through the Condamine River, holes being, you know, being set on fire, uh, but uh, you know, the, the authorities just simply don't want to know. And the companies, if they know, aren't going to tell. So we need this sort of independent type of research, even though it's still um, a fairly preliminary study and more needs to be done. We need this sort of independent research because we just simply can't trust government and companies to keep the public informed. We'll look back on tonight, I think, when the history of all this is written, as one of the major turning points. Uh, it's very similar to the research that was put out by Howarth um, in the uh, Robert Howarth in, from Cornell University in the United States in, back in 2010 when he first uh, talked about fugitive emissions and the really high levels of it in um, shale gas fields in the US um, and, um, and what, what these two uh, young men have done is to lift the lid on what's happening in, the, in Australia and thankfully before the industry has got as far down the track as it did in the US. In the US it was 20 years. The, the whole industry, um, the shale gas industry in particular, had been going uh, full on for 20 years before this sort of absolutely essential research was done. Here in Australia we've only got 5,000 uh, plus of these wells that have been set up in the Surat Basin and a few in various other places. Uh, and uh, they've got in there and started doing the sorts of research that should have been done before the industry was given the permission to do one well. There's a tried and true path that they do. They will, they will say um, that, uh, look, you know, this, is, this is only a very small amount of data, lot, not much information here at all. Um, we need so much more. We just need time to get this done. So, you know, we'll, we'll go along with this for, you know, we'll, we'll do the research over the next 20 years. And at the end of 20 years, when the whole industry's dead and dusted, then we'll tell you what the, what the impacts are going to be. Um, the other thing is, of course, <coughs> which they did with Howarth, Robert Howarth in the, uh, from Cornell Uni in the United States, was the, the research gets done, it's independent research, it's out in the public arena, um, it's, uh, it's got all sorts of uh, really um, negative messages for the industry, and so they, they play the ball, they play the man. You know, they, they actually uh, go for the researcher, uh, they try to get them sacked from the university, they use all the... Uh, the um, um, uh, influence that they've got, uh, and um, they, they try to demolish their, their credibility in the in the public arena. Uh, they'll do all of that sort of thing to um, to try uh, the same way the tobacco and the asbestos industries did for many years, trying to um, besmirch the reputation of independent uh, scientists who are prepared to tell it like it is. So this is what this industry will do, uh, and that's what will happen after tonight. They'll, either, they'll try to either diminish, diminish its importance or attack, you know, attack the messenger. Well, I think what the whole coal seam gas story is telling us um, is that it's not just simply an environmental issue, not even just a farmer's issue. This is an issue of governance. Governments over the last 20 years have got far too close to corporates. Uh, to the corporate world, far too close, and especially to the big resource um, companies, mine, the mining industry and the gas industry in this country. And uh, they, you know, the gas companies um, say jump and governments say how high. That's, and they also, of course, want the short uh, term uh, flush of money that comes with the royalties from this that they don't have to work too hard to get. And, and along the way, they um, they're quite happy to see the environment and, um, and, and people who live in these areas as the collateral damage for the whole thing. Uh, the, the other point I really want to make is about the approvals process for these um, projects. 
Um, in the 1970s, I'm old enough to have actually been a part of the movement which called for environmental impact assessment to um, uh, predate any uh, major developments that were going to have uh, important environmental impacts. Uh, and at the time they were a major um, step forward in terms of establishing the precautionary principle, what became known as the precautionary principle, uh, and, and for community input into major development decisions, major planning decisions. Now along the way the whole systems have been, been uh, the, uh, you know, you now You now can weigh in you know, tens of kilograms these EISs, you, know, you can cart them in with a wheelbarrow, but they say nothing. They're just full of verbiage, you know, really complicated, complex verbiage, which doesn't even explore often the major questions. For example, Santos, when they got their, when they put in their EIS uh, for their approval in Queensland in 2010, did not even submit a chapter on underground water impacts, the most important issue confronting the whole uh, project. And uh, they were told that they would have to do that after they got their approval. So they got their approval, and then they were, uh, they were, and, uh, you know, uh, they were pre to present their data on this. They still haven't presented that data, I might add, to the federal government. So uh, two years after, uh, well over two years after, uh, they still haven't presented important information. This is the EIS system. This is the, this is the democratic. This is the system of uh, of approvals for major developments in this country which um, you know, are key for the whole economic development of this country, which was supposed to be a way for ordinary Australians to be involved in those decisions, and they've simply become uh, a, a, a huge rort, a fraud, that, that doesn't protect either the environment or the people who are stakeholders. Look, there, there's, a, there's a bright side to all of this, and the bright side is that we're seeing the development of a social movement. The Lock the Gate movement is a major social movement in Australia. Uh, it's already thousands strong, it'll become much, much stronger. Communities are taking up the challenge that's being presented by these resource industries and um, they're, they're saying, governments aren't prepared to act, we're going to act. They're, they're taking up uh, traditions in our democratic system that go back decades to people like Gandhi and Martin Luther King and saying, um, we are going to take back the power. We're going to take back the responsibility that governments have just simply shuffled off onto these big corporations. And um, in the Northern Rivers in particular, I'm, I'm just uh, really um, uh, admiring of, of what has been done here because that's what communities are saying, you know, that um, we, we don't want this until we can uh, be assured that it's safe. Uh, we're going to stop it coming on, and if that means that we're going to have to um, uh, commit non-violent civil disobedience, so be it. Uh, and uh, so they're taking up that whole tradition of democracy, that's what it is, it's, it's, it's part of the democratic tradition, uh, and, uh, and claiming back communities from governments and, uh, and big corporations that simply want a privilege.